What's going on YouTube? My name is Zach with Android Digest and today I'm going to be reviewing the Lenovo Chromebook Duet or the Lenovo IdeaPad Duet. Uh, I know there's a few different names that they have for it or different ways you could rearrange it. I don't care, all right? This is a very hyped up Chromebook and in the midst of a crazy world where I'm not wearing a hat today and I got a beard trim and I got a haircut and look, I did not go to a barber, okay? I, my wife just had to cut my hair because times are crazy and despite all the craziness, people are buying these Chromebooks like crazy because people still have to do school, people are doing a lot of school from home, so a lot of people are looking for devices like this. It is $299 and man, having this detachable keyboard, all right, there have not been many 10 inch Chromebook tablets. In fact, I can only think of one 10 inch Chromebook tablet from Acer and did not have a keyboard. Um, outside of that, I really just know the Pixel Slate and I know of the HP Chromebook X2 that had keyboards. So there have not been a lot of devices out there that were detachable with keyboards that were also Chromebooks. And the fact that this has a detachable keyboard and it's only $299 and it's got this stand as well that goes very far back. That is a crazy thing that has really just hyped this machine up quite a bit. A lot of people have been excited about it. So I'm happy to be reviewing it today. I wanna let you know if this Chromebook is a good deal, if it's worth buying and man, I'm excited about it because not a lot of Android options out there. Uh, not a lot of Chromebook options for this size. I'm absolutely thrilled to review this Chromebook and let you know if it's worth buying. So with all that being said, let's get into it and let's get started on this review. So before we get everything going too quick, I do want to just quickly point out what comes in the box. I think that's very important. Uh, it does come with a little headphone jack adapter, okay? It does come with the dongle because this does not have a headphone jack. I'll say that right out of the way. And it just comes with a normal charger. Uh, so it's not a fast charger. This does not fast charge or super fast charge. Just a normal USB-C charger. So good to see that it does charge with USB-C. now. Outside of that, you're going to see that again, I am blown away by the package of what it does come with because it comes with this keyboard, okay? And when you think of the Apple keyboard, that Magic keyboard, that really retails at a higher price than this entire package, okay? So not just the keyboard, you get the keyboard, you get the Chromebook itself, you get the kickstand, and you get all of that for, again, a very good price at $299 or $279 if you get the 64 gigabyte model, which Lenovo, I believe is already released and some other places should release that model soon. So it is a great deal for what you get in the box. So I really wanna go over in detail, just give you a quick look at what the keyboard's like. I also wanna show you what the device looks like and also what this little stand does and what it looks like too. At the top of the device, you see a camera and you see a camera on the back as well which is pretty cool. And you see this nice blue on the back and it feels very well built, I'll say. Uh, it's got a good build quality, but this is very light as well. Uh, the tablet by itself is just over a pound, which is great. And if you compare it to the Pixel Slate, the tablet itself is much, much lighter. But when you add all the extra accessories, you add this extra little casing, you add the keyboard, it actually ends up being heavier than the Pixel Slate but you have to factor in this is 10 inches, so I feel like it's very lightweight to carry, even with all the stuff added onto it. So um, definitely a good device. Now, if you look at the side of the device, you will see the up and down on the volume, you will see a power button, you'll see a USB-C port. And at the bottom of the device, you'll see this connector for the keyboard. On the left side of the device, you won't see much. So you really just have one USB-C port on the device. You do not have a headphone jack and you see two speakers that are only on the top of the device. So with all that being said, you might be disappointed that it doesn't have an extra USB-C port or maybe a USB-A port or an HDMI port or anything like that. You have to understand that 
Yes, they did withhold some ports, but this is a tablet first, okay? So productivity is second on this device. Uh, it is a tablet first, and I don't mind one USB-C port for that very reason. Now, when you get this little, I don't even want to call it a case. Uh, it's not quite as protective as a case. It does protect the back of the device, um, but it's a nice kickstand cover. And when you put it on the back and you put it on, you see it doesn't always line up correctly. Um, sometimes it lines up a little bit off and you have to move it back into position. But you see here it lined up for me pretty well. Um, and it magnetically attaches and it's very firm. It's not going anywhere. Even if I try to pull out it a little bit, pull it down, it's not gonna come off very easily. So that's a good sign, but you can yank it off if you do need it off. Now, I will say it's a little bit difficult to get a grip on this kickstand sometimes. Sometimes you might pull at the case itself, but when you do get a grip on the kickstand, it is very, very nice. Uh, there's so many positions that you can put this kickstand in. So a lot of angles and I really like that about it. If you're using it as a tablet, you could just put it on a table, any angle. And when you attach this keyboard to it, you know, which I'll attach now. And if you close it, it does not magnetically close here, okay? So it does move around a little bit. It might move around in your bag just a little bit, but it does protect the screen, which is a bonus. The one thing you need to know about this keyboard that's very important if we take a close up look at it, it's very small. It reminds me of the Galaxy Tab S6 keyboard. And if you own that device, you'll know what I'm talking about. Because it's only a 10 inch device and they wanted to fit it, so when you close it, it's sort of like a case. That's why they had to build this in such a way that, you know, it would fit well, but that means cramped keys a little bit, okay? That means that when you add a trackpad on here, especially, the keys are gonna be smaller, they're gonna have to make some tough choices with what keys do what and what keys are where. So unfortunately, it is not the best keyboard, but you have to remember the price, okay, for expectations. It comes with a keyboard. And you know, the keys feel a little plasticky to me. I don't really like the feel of the keys. I don't love it. Uh, again, the trackpad is not a glass trackpad. So for $299 though, you can have a device that has a tablet, but has a keyboard as an option. So for a lot of us, we're wondering, is it good? And can it perform well as a tablet? Well, this device makes a fantastic tablet. And one of the big reasons is the display. It has a 1080p resolution, okay? So it is 1900 by 1200 for the resolution. And the screen has a crazy brightness, 400 nits. So picture, for example, the HP Chromebook 360, that $600 Chromebook that was at Best Buy. It was a 14 inch Chromebook. It had a really nice processor. It had great RAM, all this power, but the screen only had about 220 nits. You know, I reviewed that, it was one of my first reviews, not really great quality, but man, the screen just was not bright. I had to have it at about 90% to use it on a daily basis. But this has 400 nits of brightness. It is a very bright screen. And that's because this device is based around using it as a tablet. So it's a very bright screen. It's fantastic quality. And when we talk about performance, how does it perform? It performs great. In fact, if I compare it to something like the Galaxy Tab A, you know, that retailed around $200 and the three gigabyte of RAM versions about 280. Well, this device comes with a keyboard and I would say it is faster than that. And when I'm running different applications and opening and closing apps and I'm scrolling through Google News, it is very, very speedy and quick. And I don't notice a lot of jittering and I don't notice things taking 10 seconds or more to load. Things actually open pretty quickly. Now, when we're talking about performance, it's very important to look at the processor. And this is a MediaTek P60T processor and it's a two gigahertz processor and it also has four gigabytes of RAM. Now I have to make a caveat here, a quick disclaimer that Chromebooks, if you haven't owned one, they are very different than Android tablets, okay? Android tablets can only run Android apps and nothing else and the Chrome part of it, okay? The Chrome that you use, you open up your browser, it's a mobile browser, so it can't do as much, you can't have extensions on it, and you're a little more limited. 
Uh, you can't really have a bunch of windows on your screen, but on this, now I understand Samsung DeX can do some of that, but this in particular is unique because you have a Chromebook that it can run Android apps, but a lot of Android apps were made to work with phones. And when you put them on a tablet, you're stretching out a phone app and a lot of the tablet apps, they don't really work quite as well, even on a tablet, okay? Because they work okay on a phone or great on a phone, but when you stretch them out on a tablet, they don't work quite as well. And when you translate that to a Chromebook, you're trying to get it to work with a whole nother operating system, it doesn't always translate the best. So there are some apps, you know, I, I've seen the Pinterest app, this could change by the time you view this video, but it was a little laggy when my wife was using Pinterest. Uh, also, uh, Facebook, it is really a stretched out phone app and it doesn't even use most of the screen. It's very zoomed in and very narrowed when you use the Facebook app. So you have to understand when you're using a Chromebook that some Android apps won't work as well, even as well as they did on an Android tablet or on an Android phone. But in my opinion, it is still better to get this tablet and it will still be speedier than most Android tablets out there. And the reason is that you could create shortcuts. So in the Chrome browser, all you have to do is you have to press the little button up there, okay? It's like three little buttons or three little periods next to one another. And you click that, you click more tools, and you click to create a shortcut. So let's say the Facebook app isn't working. Oh no, what are you gonna do? Just go to facebook.com, create a shortcut, and it will basically show up as an app for you. You know, maybe you're having problems with Hulu. Just create a shortcut. And if you want, as an option, if you go to create a shortcut like I'm doing here, you click more tools, you click to create a shortcut, and when you do that, it gives you an option to open as a new window. So instead of having all the Chrome stuff up top, that really bogs down your screen and it makes it look a little ugly. They basically take that away and have it open as its own window. So it looks really like an app. So you wouldn't even notice. And in fact, sometimes it looks a lot better than an app because it's not a phone app that's stretched out. It's just a browser window that looks much, much cleaner and much, much smoother. So to summarize, if you're new to Chromebooks, you have to know how to use a Chromebook well to get it to perform well. And when I used my Chromebook and realized that Android apps aren't really what Chromebooks are built around. It's sort of like a bonus to people, just like the Linux apps. You can install Linux apps on here too. It's a bonus. It's not something that it's technically made to do or it's not the main purpose of it. Uh, so if I think of it like that, you know, if an Android app doesn't work, I don't really stress. I just go to the website and create a shortcut and many times I prefer the websites and I just create shortcuts anyway because they look a lot smoother, they look a lot cleaner. So that's what I would recommend. If you want this to perform well, go to your favorite websites, create shortcuts, and click open as new window, and it will transform your Chromebook experience. But as a tablet, the bottom line is it is really, really good in performance. I absolutely loved it. But you have to remember when you're talking about performance, this again is not meant to be your daily driver, so it's not gonna be fantastic at video editing, okay? It's not gonna be fantastic at super powerful photo editing apps and doing all these crazy things. It is very good for three or four or five tabs in Chrome where you're just browsing around, you're opening and closing them, maybe you create your shortcuts, open up different apps, you open them and close them, you multitask around like that. I thought it was very smooth and instead of taking eight seconds to open an app, like the CNET app, which I had some problems like that in my Galaxy Tab A, instead, I opened up the CNET webpage in about two seconds when I had it as a little shortcut. So I had a lot of luck with this tablet. I really loved it. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is battery life. Now, this tablet has just over a 7,000 milliamp battery, and honestly, it is very good, it's very comparable to the Galaxy Tab S6 or the Tab S5e or the Galaxy Tab S4. The big thing is it doesn't fast charge, but the tablet lasts a very long time. I can't really think of the last time I've had to charge it. I've used it for days and days, for one hour here, two hours there, three hours here, and 
it just keeps lasting so I've had very good luck with it and I'll just simply say the battery life is very good uh, you could probably get you know eight to ten hours out of it just a guess um, but honestly I haven't even thought of how long it works because I've barely ever had to charge it now it is worth mentioning that this does have a camera in the front and the back you know they are decent quality so it's not really worth mentioning too much and when we talk about extra features, you do need to know it does have two speakers on the top of the device. They are decent. They're not great. They're not absolutely terrible. They're serviceable. Uh, so just keep in mind, they're not like pixel slate worthy. They're not like some of the best speakers out there on a tablet, but they still are decent and they are good enough. All right, so what's my verdict? Should you buy this Lenovo Chromebook Duet? Is this worthy of purchasing and it always depends of course on who you are because i've got to tell you this is a fantastic deal at the price 299 dollars i think this smokes the android tablets out there around this price because you have huawei tablets out there and i'm sorry but most of them are running really old software and you get the newer software or the newer tablets out there and they're not really gonna be able to run the Google Play Store. So you're in a bind with Huawei tablets. You have Samsung tablets that typically get two years of software support, but this is gonna get more software support, okay? It should get at least six, if not eight years, and sometimes they even extend years as you go. So this is gonna get a lot of updates in the future. You know, I expect Android apps over time will start to work a little bit better over time. And this has a full desktop browser, which Android tablets really don't have. And on top of that, this can be used for some productivity. So it reminds me a lot of the Galaxy Tab S6. It's just a little bit better in the sense of having the full Chrome OS operating system. So the Galaxy Tab S6 retails for about $650. I would say it is a little bit faster than this Chromebook. It also is a little more secure because this tablet does not have a in-screen or doesn't have any fingerprint reader. It doesn't have face unlock. So if that's a big bother to you, you know, the Galaxy Tab S6 might be looking into, but that tablet retails at $650. And then you have it on sale sometimes for $550. Well, it's a little bit faster, yes, but you know, you have Samsung DeX, which is its little desktop mode, but that mode doesn't really compare. It's not quite as good in my mind as Chrome OS. And Chrome OS has a full desktop browser with full desktop extensions, uh, which is a big deal. You could create shortcuts to make those apps. And in my opinion, they work better than a lot of Android apps out there. So when you factor that in, that you could really in a way make your own apps by making those shortcuts. And I think they're a lot quicker than some other apps out there. I think this is a great bargain, so I'm not saying it's as good as the Tab S6, but I'm saying it's not too far behind, um, and I'm saying I think it is a better buy than most of those Android tablets out there. I think it's a better buy than the Tab A. I think it's a better buy than the Tab S5e. Yes, the Tab S5e is a better screen. Yes, the Tab S5e has four speakers, so if those things are important, you keep that in mind but I think this has better updates and I do think it's gonna be about equivalent in speed. But the big thing is it has a little bit of options for productivity. So you add in this, this keyboard, you add in this as well. Uh, I think that adds huge implications for productivity. And I understand you could buy a keyboard for those other devices, but that brings the price up. Even the S5e would be around $500 when you buy something like that. So. Uh, I just think this is a very good buy. I think it is great for people who want a tablet, but you want a little bit of productivity in your life. Uh, but if you have the Google Pixel Slate and you're thinking about going down, this is good for the form factor. It's nice, but you're going to get better performance from the Google Pixel Slate. You're gonna be able to do a little more and it's gonna be a little better for productivity because the keyboard is gonna be a little better. Uh, it's a really good tablet and I would really recommend it for most people looking around that two to $400 price range. Thank you for watching and I would ask you, please subscribe to my channel. It really helps my family out. And thank you so much for watching. It means the world to us here at Android Digest. I and mean, as always, please stay safe 
and enjoy your week and enjoy your day and have a good one.